Hey, what's up, everybody? Sorbolt 25 here, aka John Hansen. Uh, bringing a custom figure review, I might as well say. Um, I'm not going to transform uh, any of the cut figures I'm showing in Buick mode. Maybe, maybe not, probably not. <laughs> but just mainly repaints and mod some of the mods, as you can tell, um, with. Battle Blades, Hunt for the Decepticons, Bumblebee. Now, this is probably one of my favorite Bumblebee figures, second to the Leader Class Dark Moon figure. And of course, the old 7 Bumblebee was pretty nice. And then the Revenge of the Fallen one probably wasn't the best, but then this guy came out, and I'm like, oh man, I have, I have to get this one. This one looks really good. And it is a decent looking figure. And then. The Dark of the Moon came out and figures started getting smaller and I don't think, I don't really like the look of the Dark of the Moon Bumblebee, but this is, this is one of my favorite Bumblebee figures. This is this one right here. I don't know about the new Bumblebee for the High Octane Bumblebee. I don't know if they're going to do the 2015, 2016 figure either. I don't know, but I like, this is one of my favorite Bumblebee figures. Um, as you can tell, I repainted this figure in Dark of the Moon style with the uh, wide, the wide stripes which go across the, uh, um, the side, both sides of his head. Um, I added some of my own detail work to the figure, like I put a little gunmetal, some gold, just different ad, uh, ads on the figure. But you know, enough about the repaint, but I want to talk about this chest. As you can see, the chest has been completely modified to give it give the figure more of a movie look to it because in the movies, Bumblebee's chest was always somehow angled. It had like a low angle, it didn't look like too much of a car like how it did originally. Like that. But anyway, what I did with this fi what I did with this figure is in here was a little yellow piece which was connected to here, and it was all it was pinned in and it just made it pivot up and down. So what I did was took some wire cutters, cut probably like maybe right there, and then I uh, used my Dremel with the sanding bit sanded that down and then uh, there was a little piece that was still in there so I had to do was do a little use the cutting wheel and pop the pin out and that little yellow piece and then just use some super glue put on a little ball joint which the ball joint I found fit, fits perfectly in this little little area right there so you just pop both of the pieces in and bam, you you got a more of a movie angled look in the ch in the chest. Now, if you have if you if you're a customizer like me and you have this figure, do this mod. I, I actually I took the mod mod off of TFW 2005, so the guy who did this mod knew exactly what he was doing, and all I did was grab some photos offline and then did it myself, and then. It, Bam, it worked out really good. Um, I'd like to figure out what other mods I can do to this figure. I want to add a spoiler right here in the back, and I'm thinking about making it split, so that's another work in progress plan I have for this figure. So I'm going to put this guy aside, but I have a little story to tell. Uh, this next figure is probably one of the best finds ever. It was like one in a million shot. But the other day I was up in Janesville, which is a city in Wisconsin, and I went, up, went to the local Goodwill there. And I went with my sister and her friend, and we were just, you know, putzing around and stuff like that. Um, I found some stuff. I found a, a Dark of the Moon Voyager class Optimus. The foot was busted, so... I wasn't going to get that. And I saw some weapons. I saw um, 
Dark of the Moon Jolt weapon and Dark of the Moon Laser Beak weapon. I saw those, I'm like, mm, maybe I could probably, even though I have the Jolt weapon and the Laser Beak weapon, I could probably m make a weapon. But then I saw this Silver Pontiac Socialist. And if you know your movie history well enough, the only Transformer that was a Pontiac Socialist was this guy. Presenting Hunt for the Decepticons, Human Alliance Jax. I saw this guy for 99 cents. Had to pay an extra set five cents for tax, of course. So it was a dollar four. So I wasn't out a lot of money. And I'm like, I saw this guy. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. I know exactly what this form is and this figure. I grabbed it without even thinking. Now there's only three major flaws missing from this figure. One is the weapon and the windows that are connected to that are supposed to be connected to here. And here are missing. And of course, the little mini Captain Lennox figure. So, but in other words, there's nothing wrong with this figure. It's just missing two windows and a weapon. That I can deal with. Like, alright, that Dark of the Moon Voyager class Optimus I saw was missing a foot. I'm not going to get a figure that's missing a foot. I could have bought it for cheap, but I probably would have tore it apart and used it to parts for something to make maybe modify Optimus, my uh, Revenge of the Fallen Optimus, which has been still probably going to be customized. But, but yeah. So I found this guy and, you know, I did some repainting with him, like a little gold in there, steel, um, just a little, then try to make a little red in there, a little red in there, and some more steel, and then um, up here, it looked kind of plain, so that brass plastic piece right here, I painted that black, and then added some detail work, as you can see. The head, I got rid of that gold that was in the face, uh, used some blue paint to make the eyes pop out a little bit, and Granted, it was just a small repaint. The figure is awesome. Even with the with even with the new paint applications I put on this figure, it looks great. You know, this was a amazing find. I'm gonna to have to say. But a little bit about this weapon. As I said, that I found uh, the other jolt, uh, another jolt weapon and a laser beak weapon. So I'm like, you know, what? I want to merge the two together, and I came up with this weapon right here, and I call it the uh, CSR, which is the co uh, Crossbow Sniper Rifle. And here it is in all its glory. You know, it has some gold here, some, and then pretty much it's just gold and the color steel. That's what it's called, I think. Um, um, flat steel, yep. But, it looks good, you know, and I can put it in the hand or I can attach it where that, I think a little missile launcher is supposed to go on, on the shoulder. I think that's another thing that was missing from the figure. But yeah, I can just pop it in pretty much right in here. If I, like that, right there. Bam. Or it will just fall on the ground. But you get the general idea. But yeah, it, this, I really like this figure a lot. This was a great find. You know, second to, second to Bumblebee. Bumblebee will always be one of my favorites, but this figure of Jazz was a good find. Now, if Hasbro grew a freaking brainstem and took the idea of Hunt for the Decepticons Human Alliance Jazz, shrunk it down to the size of what? Human Alliance, uh, Hunt for the Decepticons Bumblebee, there is a that is that would probably be a really really good figure right there. But you know Hasbro they've been really lacking on um, stuff lately. But anyways, uh I've just been busy with a lot of stuff. Um I'll probably get to some stop motions in the future hopefully. Just got a bunch of 
stuff I gotta deal with, but you no. Know, hey, tell me what you think of these guys, you know, with um the new B mod, uh Jazz here, just even though he's just a little detailed repaint guy figure. Um but yeah, maybe even the weapon, you know. You know, post your comments down below, like the video. I haven't done one of these in a while, but that's about it. This is John Hansen signing off.